All right. If you're a series Land Rover owner, you know that feeling, that little prayer you say every time you press the brake pedal. Well, getting that pedal firm and confident is probably one of the most satisfying jobs you can do. So today, we're going to walk through how to bleed these brakes properly, step by step, and get that solid feel back under your foot. So here's the plan. We'll start with why air is such a bad guy in your brake lines. Then we'll get our tools together. We'll cover the classic two-person method, some clever one-person workarounds, the common pitfalls that'll drive you mad, and finally, the all-important checks before you hit the road. Let's get to it. Okay, first things first. Before we even crack open a bleed screw, you gotta understand what we're up against. It's all about what's happening inside those brake lines. Ah yes, that dreaded spongy pedal. The one that feels like you're stepping on a wet sponge and travels halfway to the floor before anything happens. Well, that is the number one telltale sign that you've got air in your brake lines. It's the enemy of any hydraulic system, and your foot is always the first to know it's there. Here's the deal, and it's really simple. Brake fluid is designed to be incompressible. You push the pedal, and that force is transferred directly to the brakes. But air, air squishes. So if you've got an air bubble in there, all your pedal effort just goes into squeezing that bubble, not stopping the vehicle. All that force just vanishes. And it's not just about getting air in when you work on the system. Your brake fluid has this party trick. It's hygroscopic. It's a fancy word, but all it means is it literally sucks moisture out of the air. That water then rusts your system from the inside out, and even worse, it lowers the fluid's boiling point. Get the brakes hot, that water turns to steam, and boom, you've got a compressible gas in your lines, which is just as bad as air. That's why we change it every couple of years. All right, let's get our gears sorted. A bit of preparation now will save you a world of pain and mess later. Trust me on this. You really don't need a huge amount of kit. The absolute must-haves are a spanner that fits the bleed nipples, and do yourself a favor, get a proper flare nut wrench so you don't round them off. You need a bit of clear tubing so you can actually see the bubbles coming out, a jam jar for the nasty old fluid, and plenty of rags because it will get messy. Now, listen up because this is the big one. This is non-negotiable. Only ever use brake fluid from a brand new factory sealed bottle. For our series rigs, that's usually DOT3. The minute you open a bottle, it starts absorbing that moisture we talked about. Using an old open bottle is just putting the problem right back in. Don't do it. Okay, let's dive into the classic two-person pump method. This is the way it's been done for decades, it's straight out of the manual, and honestly, it's a rite of passage. You will need a helper for this, a trusty assistant. This is a rhythm, a little dance between you and your helper. It's all about communication. You're at the wheel with the spanner, they're in the driver's seat. You shout down, they push the pedal to the floor and hold it. You crack the bleed nipple open just enough to see fluid and bubbles spurt out, then you tighten it back up. Crucially, you tighten it before they lift their foot. Then you shout up, they release the pedal, and you just do that over and over until you see nothing but clean, clear fluid with zero bubbles. And here it is, the golden rule, the cardinal sin of brake bleeding. Do not, under any circumstances, let the master cylinder reservoir run dry. If the level drops too low, it'll gulp a load of air straight into the system and you're right back at square one, but worse. Top it up after every wheel, seriously. But what if you're working on your own, flying solo in the workshop? No worries. There are some brilliant one-person methods out there. And to be honest, a lot of us prefer them now. So you've really got two main options here. First is a pressure bleeder. This kit attaches to your master cylinder and uses low pressure, usually from your spare tire, to just push the new fluid through the system for you. The other way, which is really clever, is reverse bleeding. You do the exact opposite. You get a big syringe and push fresh fluid up from the wheel back to the master cylinder. And that reverse bleeding idea it is a fantastic bit of advice. Just think about it for a second. What does air want to do in a fluid? It wants to rise. So by pushing fluid up from the bottom, you're working with physics, chasing those stubborn air bubbles up and out of the system naturally. It's brilliant for those really troublesome systems where an air bubble just won't budge. Look, no matter which technique you choose, the two-person dance, pressure, or reverse bleeding, the goal is identical. Get the old, bubbly, contaminated fluid out and get the new, clean, pure fluid in. And always, always follow the sequence. 
start at the wheel that's furthest from the master cylinder and work your way closer. On a right-hand drive series, that's rear left first. Okay, time for some hard-won wisdom. These are the things that'll trip you up, the common frustrations that can turn this easy job into a whole weekend of swearing. Here's what to look out for. You know, sometimes you start bleeding the brakes and you uncover a much bigger, nastier problem. If you crack a bleed nipple and what comes out looks like this, thick, greasy, and disgusting, just stop. That's not brake fluid. That means your hub seal has failed and has dumped grease all over your brake shoes and into the cylinder. Bleeding is not gonna fix that. You've got a much bigger job on your hands. A few quick pro tips for you. Seize nipples are your enemy. Douse them in penetrating oil the day before you even start. If you've got a really stubborn air bubble that just won't shift, try giving the brake back plate or cylinder a few gentle taps with a soft hammer. It can help jiggle it loose. And finally, when you tighten those bleed nipples, be gentle. They're hollow. They will snap if you go full gorilla on them. Just nip it up so it's snug and sealed. That's it. Right. You've been to all four corners. The fluid's coming out clean. No more bubbles. Fantastic work. But you are not done yet. Don't even think about putting those wheels back on. This last part is all about safety. Okay, final checks. Number one, get in the cab and feel that pedal. It should be high and hard. No sponginess, no sinking to the floor. Number two, get your head under there and look at every single joint and nipple you touched. They need to be bone dry. If you see even a hint of a weep, you have a leak. Fix it. Then top off the master cylinder one last time, get the wheels on, torque them up, and go for a very slow, very careful test drive somewhere safe. And there you have it. A firm, reliable brake pedal under your foot. It's a great feeling, and it gives you the confidence to get out there and tackle the next adventure, whatever that may be. So what's next on your to-do list? Thanks for watching.